Hello, I'm Sarah Clark and I'm an advisory teacher with the communication and interaction team. I'm Lucy Bonford and I'm a speech and language therapist and advisor with the CLI team. So this webinar is aimed at supporting you with those next steps following your identification of language needs. If you've not yet carried out any assessment, please do watch our short webinar on identification and assessment before proceed proceeding and the details are in the description just below. The strategies and resources that we'll suggest today are considered as a good initial response to meeting those needs and we hope that it will help you to identify those first steps to support. This will enable a first cycle of assess, plan, do, review. And we ask that you complete this cycle before requesting additional specialist support. So this short webinar offers just some ideas and you'll no doubt have other ideas and resources and strategies that will be helpful in relation to supporting language difficulties. In following the guidance on identification and assessment, you'll have a profile of strengths and needs across the areas shown on the screen now. It remains important to work on supporting the skills at the base of the pyramid, as well as focusing on the areas of concern further up, as getting the foundation skills in place will ensure that students are more ready to access the curriculum. So let's think more carefully about ways to support listening and concentration. The information seen on this slide comes from the Devon Graduated Response Tool and suggests strategies to reduce distractions and help students focus on key information. Young people who have difficulties with listening and concentration can't sustain listening for long periods. So it's vital that we consider the length and complexity of teacher input. How long are students expected to listen to an adult talking without them doing anything? Can we enhance the incoming verbal information using modelling and allowing opportunities to discuss or noting down key points in bullet form or on task plans? Does the environment support listening and concentrating? Seating, lighting, noise distractions, etc. all need to be considered and being aware of any factors that might the student might find particularly distracting to support with this seating plan. It's always really helpful just to talk to the students about this because they are usually really good at telling us what distracts them or what they find difficult. So in addition to this universal provision, some students will need additional opportunities to practice these skills. Bingo or lotto games can work really well as a starter task and can be additionally linked to key topic vocabulary. Barrier games can also be really helpful in helping students to focus in and extract relevant information. A similar activity is where a speaker gives directions using a map which the listener needs to follow and they both need to turn up at the right place. Merry Maps is a published resource which works on this idea, encouraging active listening, and you'll find the link in the details below. We'll be talking also a little bit later on about using visuals to support understanding, but these also support engagement and concentration. We want to focus here on the importance of student and adult interaction and the value of modelling positive interactions across all year groups as a way to develop these skills. When are the opportunities during the school day for relationship building? Every interaction is an intervention and every interaction is an opportunity for modelling appropriate social communication skills. These skills are really complex to teach, so we need to make the most of opportunities like tutor time and use them for relationship building modelling social problem solving together as a class. Schools should also be considering support around unstructured times, access to structured clubs, for example. So when are the opportunities for interactions and how are these planned into the day? Group work can be a good time for students to practise their communication skills, but some students will need additional support again 
Allocating specific roles can help students understand what's expected of them and provide and also provide language stems to support discussion. Practicing the use of language stems and making pre-teaching vocabulary a regular part of your provision will again build skills and confidence. Identified students will need opportunities to understand and practice using these resources outside of curricular work before being supported to do so in class. Adults should also be aware of the importance of breaking down communication skills and explicitly drawing attention to the good skills in others. So saying things like, did you notice when I was explaining about the maths task, James was looking at me and nodding. That really helped me to understand that he was listening and he was understanding what I was saying. These ideas can be further explored during targeted mentoring sessions, possibly using social narratives as a tool to explore them in more detail. And many of you will be aware of the Language for Behaviour and Emotions book that you can see now on the screen. And these use scenarios which focus on misunderstandings and disagreements and how to use language to work through these difficult situations and, and solve them. The difference between this resource and some of the other social skills interventions is that it puts language learning into relatable context for the young people through the use of these scenarios and it gives lots of opportunities to practice the language learned. So let's move on now to thinking about supporting understanding. Developing receptive language skills can be a long process, but there are a few key areas that will make a difference to all students and help to develop their own understanding of the things that they may find difficult. As language is a constant through the day, it's essential to consider what's happening in the classroom. And these core strategies provide that good universal level of support. The Education Endowment Foundation's Vocabulary in Action poster provides some useful guidance around pre-teaching and whole class vocabulary learning. Sometimes people are worried that the using less language advice means giving students less exposure to key vocabulary. And what we know is that our identified pupils will actually need many more exposures to that vocabulary. However, really what we mean here is thinking carefully about which of our words carry meaning and trying to reduce all of those extra words that we put in, maybe for politeness, such as would you like to, rather than giving a direct instruction. Cutting out the unnecessary words will really help your students to focus on the key message. There's a huge variety of visual tools and this slide shows just some of the benefits of using them to support all students. We need to balance oral delivery with visual aids and demonstrations. Using visuals such as mind maps and graphic organisers for every student can get away from that idea that visuals are childish. We all still use visuals to support us in our daily lives. And as we said earlier, they can not only support understanding, but also engagement, focus and independent learning. The first strategy to support comprehension monitoring is providing sufficient processing time for young people to be able to understand. Apply the 10 second rule for students with language needs before you repeat. Comprehension monitoring needs to be modelled and prompted with the whole class to support your asking friendly environment. Nonverbal systems to indicate when you haven't understood or you're stuck can be really helpful. But it's very important that whatever system you decide on is consistent across subject areas and is available to everyone rather than just to certain targeted students. Young people with language needs will need additional supported opportunities to practice their comprehension monitoring skills, including using the agreed nonverbal system. Without additional support and explicit teaching, it would be very difficult for students with language needs to be able to identify what specifically they haven't understood particularly if the lesson contains a lot of unfamiliar vocabulary. Additional opportunities to practice should ideally initially be outside of curricular tasks before students are given structured chances to practice within the lesson. Being able to ask for support or clarification would be a useful functional target for a school-based plan. 
The area of need that you've identified may be around a young person's use of language. We're going to think now about what extra those pupils might need to help them develop their talking skills. The strategies and resources that you can see on the screen now will be really familiar to you as whole class tools to support learning. As we talked about earlier in this webinar, students with identified language needs will benefit from explicit teaching and modelling of how to use the provided tools and may need slightly simplified versions as they develop their skills. Visuals that support organisation of thought will be particularly helpful for those young people that you've identified with narrative or storytelling difficulties. You'll also be aware of specific interventions to support narrative development, such as the Black Sheep Press, Key Stage 3 Narrative Pack, Parts of Language for Behaviour and Emotions, and Victoria Joffe's Narrative Intervention Programme. There are also some useful resources in the Elk Clan Language Builders 11 to 16 book. There's a really useful free resource for supporting word le learning at secondary from the University of Sheffield, which includes whole class approaches, and we'll share the link in our useful resources below. Visuals such as the instant narrative that you can see at the bottom of the slide here are really helpful to scaffold conversations about interactions and incidents. Phonological awareness skills can still be a gap for secondary pupils and for those with persistent literacy difficulties, it's well worth checking these out and offering additional support where there are any skills which are not yet secure. So many of you are already using the SEMH SLCN screening tool and this is really just a reminder that there is a place within the tool to link the identified areas of difficulty that you may have rag rated to your intervention planning and you can see that highlighted on the screen now. And as you scroll down towards the end of the tool, you'll find lots of information for planning support for both the SEMH and language skills. These areas match the headings on the initial screening part of the tool, so they will link directly back to the area of difficulty that you've identified. So please do scroll down and, and have a look for that helpful area as well. OK, so once you have implemented some strategies and resources and reviewed them, you will have successfully completed a plan do review cycle. And as we said at the start, the things that we have talked about here are just examples of some of the tools and interventions that you may want to implement. When further advice or support is required following this completed cycle, an online consultation with your CNI advisory team may well be considered. But when making a referral, please send us your most recent reviewed school based plan, as this is really helpful for us to see what you've already tried, the impact of that support, and then we can tailor our advice accordingly.